Hello and welcome to Team Short Circuit's final presentation. I'm Jeff Bosdet and my partner is Isabella Ip. Together we made a course on basic electronics and the Arduino microcontroller. Uh, this course does have a bit of a programming pr prerequisite. Uh, students need to be able to uh, understand variables, conditionals, loops, functions, and some basic object-oriented programming, but they do not need to know anything about electronics. It'll take them through uh, voltage, current, resistors, pulse width modulation, um, all the way through to controlling LCD screens and motor driver chips. And the final project, they built a robot that is eventually capable of Bluetooth control from their computer. Uh, so pretty awesome. The motivation for this project is that I'm not just the developer of it, I'm also the client. I teach high school robotics and this year I taught an early version of the course, but I had a bit of a problem. Some of my students were brilliant, future computer scientists, whatever. Some of my students just didn't want to take art. So I had these two groups of varying motivations, and by the end of my course, I had my top students two months ahead doing amazing stuff, and my bottom students two months behind. Um, so having that two month gap between them uh, really, made things difficult. I ended up having to teach the same stuff four times. And so, this course. This course will allow my students to be more self-paced. Uh, I don't have to do the same lecture over and over and it'll give me more time to help my students and hopefully they'll learn more. Uh, it should also give my top students a more flexibility in some of their projects. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, it's not really designed to be a massively online course. Uh, as I will be in the classroom three times a week with my students helping them through it. It could easily be adapted to it and there does appear to be a demand. Uh, our peer feedback has shown a lot of interest and research we did doing the various assignments showed that there are tens if not hundreds of thousands of people interested in such a course uh, and there's not that many good courses. This course in many respects is better than any other out there. Uh, so if I can find a source of cheap hosting, I'd be interested in making it available to the world. I'd like to talk about a few of the strengths of the course. Uh, the first one I'd like to mention is that there is a lot of content. Uh, the course contains 13 subsections spread amongst three sections. Uh, and each subsection on its own is significant. If we look through one of Isabella's sections, uh, each instructional unit uh, generally contains a video which is intended for use for students learning material for the first time or if they want a thorough review, and also written notes if they just need a little bit of information. They don't have to go through the entire video to find it. Uh, they're going to need this information. They're going to need to review back uh, because there's a fair amount of conventional assessment in each subsection. In this particular one, there are two uh, quizzes, and those quizzes contain multiple choice questions. They contain things like fill in the line of code. Some uh, assessment units uh, contain checkbox questions. Uh, they're they're well thought through uh, questions designed to require students to understand the content before progressing further. Another area of strength for this course is all the projects. Uh, to make it this course, I designed 10 original projects and an original robot as well. It comes in various stages. Let's take a look at a few of them. This is the setup for project two, Spaceship Interface. This is what I call the versatile light. You can change the colors and adjust the brightness with the potentiometer. This is designed to practice the use of the RGB LED, uh, analog read with the potentiometer, and analog write in controlling the brightness of all those things. This is a circuit I came up with called the light controlled servo. I kind of like it because it feels like magic. You don't touch it, and there it goes. So 
you got a voltage divider with your uh, photoresistor and based on the analog read of that determines what signal it sends to the servo. This is the reaction speed tester. Uh, you press the button when the light comes on. It comes on about every five seconds, but it's random and when it comes on. Uh, it keeps track of how long it takes you to hit the button after the light comes on and also um, how many missed button presses if you press the button when you're not supposed to. It keeps track of that as well. Here's the voltmeter. It's designed to get the students to practice working with uh, the LCD display and also to mess around with uh, uh, using it with sensors. This is the joystick controlled motor I designed. Um, it takes the difference from the center position. It has a little dead zone and when you get beyond it you can slowly increase power in one direction or the other. This is the final robot project. It's built and programmed in stages. Initially the students pro just program a bunch of functions for making go forward, left, right, back, and stop. Uh, right after that they figured out how to use the ultrasonic sensor on the front, uh, send out a pulse and figure out how long it takes for the pulse to get back and doing a little bit of math they figure out how far something is in front of it. They give it wall avoiding ability and then the final stage for the robot uh, is Bluetooth control from a computer and also the robot sends back the distance to uh, the object in front of it. The course feature I'm most proud of and one that I haven't seen in any other courses are my Arduino simulations. Uh, there are 13 of them sprinkled throughout the course and let's take a quick look at one. Students only get to see the Eno file, which is the standard Arduino file type. Uh, they're guided through uh, to finding the solution. Um, and this is the way I managed to simulate it. I just have piles and piles of functions that uh, mimic the various Arduino commands. And then there's a hidden main function that imports their code and then tests it against a variety of test cases, giving constructive feedback uh, if they're messing something up, which will hopefully guide them to getting the right solution. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the highlights of this course, half as much as my children enjoyed following my robot around. Uh, if you are a future Georgia Tech student interested in building upon this, you're welcome to do so. Uh, some suggestions would be adding I2C sections or software serials so you could connect to more interesting components, uh, adding Wi-Fi uh, to the robot, or using a Raspberry Pi with an Arduino slave uh, to add uh, analog read and pulse width modulation support for your uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, thanks for listening.